Hey there, Horse Center fans. Matt and I are back with another exciting edition of the show. Matt, we are talking about Belmont Stakes Day. We certainly are. Let's kick off the Triple Crown 2020 at Belmont Park. That just doesn't sound right to me, but it's true. The Belmont Stakes, first leg of the Triple Crown. We're also talking Acorn. Woody Stevens, watch it all right now on Horse Center. Welcome to another edition of Horse Center, everyone. I am Brian Zipsy, and as always, I have the special pleasure of being joined by my co-host to the East Coast. That's Matt Schiffman. How are you today, Matt? I am very good, Brian. You are not in your usual location. Where are you, my friend? I am. Uh, I'm visiting my mom up in uh, the UP, the Upper Peninsula of Michigan, right across the street from Lake Superior. Matt, having a good time here. But enough about that. Let's talk about Belmont Stakes Day. That's why people are tuning in, Matt. Uh, a field of 10 was drawn for the Belmont, the first leg of the Triple Crown, nine furlongs instead of 12 furlongs. It's a strange year, but let's make the most of what we have, and let's talk Belmont. Tis the law, drew the eight. Should be a heavy favorite, Matt. I think he's going to be under even money, the son of Constitution. Yeah, I can't disagree with that at all, Brian. Uh, um, and, and Drew the Eight Hole, which is a good spot for Tis the Law to be. He'll be, be able to get out of the gate smoothly, find a comfortable spot, uh, 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 stalking the pace on the outside to have a clear path to make his run uh, for uh, the leader to run down the uh, pace setters around that big sweeping turn at Belmont Park. Yeah, Matt, let me just say this. Uh, you know, he's trained by Barkley Tag and, and owned by Sakatoga Stable, a likable group, uh, a, a veteran, uh, a true horseman in Barkley Tag. You know, you got the funny side, New York bred angle from about 17 years ago. It, it's, it's a nice story all the way around, but I'm really happy for Jockey Manny Franco because I think he's a, a good rider and I think he's a nice guy. And it's good to see him kind of in the uh, forefront of things with Tis the Law. But Tis the Law has been terrific. Five races, I think only a off track and a tough trip last year in the Kentucky Jockey Club. Churchill Downs uh, uh, prevents him from being uh, perfect in five starts as he comes here to the Belmont. He's got a big win over the Belmont track in the Champagne in a similar type of trip. I'll expect him to get on Saturday. Uh, I like to poke holes in heavy favorites, but... Uh, I'm really finding it hard to poke any holes in, in the Florida Derby's resume and the way he's coming up to this race. Yeah, I agree with that, Brian. Uh, as we said last week, we don't always like to bet favorites, but when you're analyzing a race and uh, you see a horse that you think is going to be the winner, that has to be your pick. I, I, I feel that Tis the Law is a, is a legitimate standout in this race, in so many different ways, his resume that you mentioned, the only grade one winner uh, uh, in the race, should get the kind of setup that uh, they're looking for, has great uh, races over the Belmont Park surface already, very hard to poke holes in a uh, likely winner and a heavy favorite, which is what you've got to do when you want to beat them. you got to at least poke some holes in their uh, record. Yeah, well, the only hole I can think of maybe is that this is the toughest race he's faced yet. But, you know, we've talked about this Belmont Six coming up a little bit lighter than it, it looked like it was going to be a couple weeks ago. Uh, so, yeah, it might be the toughest race he's faced yet, but it, it's not by a long way in any stretch. It's not like he's facing a much tougher crowd than he's already beaten in races like the Champagne and the Holy Bull and the uh, Florida Derby. So, yeah, it is the law. My strategy, Matt, is going to be to pick one horse. And, and really go with it, uh, go with him, uh, with Tis the Law, box him, and, and maybe try some trifectas with a couple other horses. But uh, you got to have Tis the Law. He just looks too tough for this bunch as a likely winner. Let's talk about the rest of the field, though, Matt. I think the second choice probably will be Sola Vellante, uh, the son of Caracantai. And I love the way trainer Patrick Biancone, uh, the, the Frenchman uh, veteran trainer, uh, is bringing Sola Vellante up to this race because... Instead of working him up to the races, what has become so commonplace in today's racing, he got a race into Sola Volante. It was a nice mile prep at Gulfstream over some good horses, and uh, he comes back 10 days later, but he doesn't have much speed now. 
Yeah, that is very true. And I agree. And I agree with you. Uh, 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 Bian Cohn uh, put him in a race. He wanted to see where he stood uh, in terms of coming out of competition as opposed to uh, maybe uh, breezing in company. And he did very well in that allowance. It was a it was a decent field in there, beating two horses, Ete Indian, his uh, stable mate, and, and Chivalry, who were, I guess, uh, considered a little bit for the Belmont stakes, but he's a, he's a closer. He's a deep closer in the race. And, and there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, as the field for the Belmont shook out, it looks like he's going to get the kind of setup that he wants. Yeah. And I wasn't sure about that just even a few days ago, but a late addition to the Belmont stakes kind of changed my perception of the pay, the early pace that's going to happen in the Belmont stakes on Saturday. So I think that's an important part of this race. I, 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 I would also mention that Sola Volante in that allowance race beat the horses that Tis the Law beat in the Florida Derby. So uh, you do have that. Uh, of course, Tis the Law did it easier, but Sola Volante didn't look like he was all out as he rushed by them uh, late in that final uh, eighth of a mile at Gulfstream Park. Now, while he might be benefited by the addition, the horse I'm talking about is four left as a late addition to the Belmont Stakes. The horse I thought would be close to him for uh, vying for second uh, choice on the on the odds board is Tappet to win, a son of Tappet from the Mark Cassie barn, who's really speedy, and uh, he he came out with a really big allowance win a few weeks ago at Belmont that kind of forced the hand of the connections to say, hey, we got to try the Belmont after that win. Yeah. That's for sure. He's now two for two um, in 2020, and he came out with a big one um, going a mile around the one turn at Belmont Park, came up with a big speed, speed figure, got on the lead, got loose, blew the field away. And like you said, uh, um, it kind of forced uh, Mark Cassie to say, hey, look at the look at what this horse just did. Why not take a shot in the Belmont Stakes? That's the Cassie style. Yeah, yeah, it is. And Cassie has won the last two Triple Crown races. We didn't know that the sequence would be Preakness and Belmont from last year and Belmont from this year. Yeah. But Cassie, if top to win, wins on Saturday, the Belmont Stakes, Cassie will have three straight Triple Crown races uh, to his credit. I liked, uh, I, I feared Tappet to win more when uh, I, I didn't know four left was going to be in the race, but uh, I think four left does hurt his chances a little bit. Plus, I don't completely trust Tappet to win after getting a couple shots last year and really backing up against good horses. He's probably a new horse. He's probably a better horse this year, but I still don't completely trust him. I think he is going to get bad, and with that added, added speed, I'm not going to be tapping it to win on Saturday, Matt. Uh, I was a little surprised Dr. Post. I thought Dr. Post would be the fourth choice, but I was a little surprised to see Dr. Post so low on the morning line from the Belmont Stakes odds maker. But Dr. Post, you really don't know how good he could be. He's only had three lifetime races, and he did encounter some trouble before he went on to win that on bridal stakes at Gulfstream last time. Yeah, and we all know about the success of his trainer, Todd Pletcher, in the Belmont Stakes. Granted, this is not the typical Belmont Stakes that uh, Pletcher uh, has had so much success in the difference in distance and things. But uh, Dr. Post, this son of Quality Road, looks like one of those horses that could very well make another jump up in the Belmont Stakes. Yeah, Dr. Post could make another jump up, Matt. We we don't know how far he needs to jump up to deal with the likes of especially Tis the Law, but I would suspect that he will jump up. And uh, in that unbridled stakes attachment, rate kind of pushed him and pinned him as, as long as he could before Dr. Post had enough and just pulled his way through and, and won pretty nicely. So Dr. Post could be a nice horse. I consider him a threat. He's got the same running style. Uh, as tis the law, and he's outside tis the law in the nine hole in here. He wants to stalk and pounce as well, as does the horse outside of both of them, the only horse outside of both of them, and that's the 10 pneumatic. And earlier, Matt, I said, I'm looking for one horse just to go with, just to play, play him with tis the law, put him in some triples. And I've decided that horse is pneumatic. I don't think pneumatic is going to be even as low as his eight to one on the morning line. I think he's legitimately the fifth choice in here. This on Uncle Mo from the Steve Asmussen barn. I see a lot of similarities, frankly, with his 
his uh, past performances as I do with Dr. Post. But the one thing I like about Pneumatic is he's coming out of a really tough race at Churchill Downs. I don't think he wants to battle for the lead. When he won his allowance race before that, he came from, from fourth or fifth place early and he made a nice move. I think that's what he's going to do in the Belmont. But I think that tough race behind Maxfield is going gonna, is gonna to get him ready for a battle here. And, and I think he's got a real shot. I'm thinking 10 to 1 in the Belmont. And I agree with uh, the observation that you made, Brian, that there are a lot of similarities uh, w between Pneumatic and Dr. Post in terms of uh, both of them in their last race really uh, made it clear that they are horses that have got some talent and that they are horses that are on the improve and that they both uh, could very well make a step up in here. And so uh, uh, Pneumatic is another one that I think has a shot to maybe not win, but maybe on the, maybe get the bottom of the uh, exacta in this race. And my strategy in this race, Brian, because we're talking about tis the law on top as an odds on favorite is to just pick out one horse and, and go with an exacta tis the law over that horse, bet it heavy. I don't, I, I don't want to dilute any price that I'm going to get from that exacta by fooling around with exacta boxes or even trifectas. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm going a different way just in case, because I think Disney Law still needs to prove it a little bit. And the fact that he's four to five or so in here, I want to have that pneumatic on top of Disney Law. And if Disney Law somehow runs out, I want to have something even bigger. But pneumatic is the horse I cho chose as, as my play in here with Disney Law. 10 to 1 or so, I just feel like, unlike Dr. Post, who really needs to, to prove he can run with these type of horses, Pneumatic's kind of already proved it, and I think he'll move forward off that race in the Matt win. Don't forget, folks, Maxfield would be right up there with Tis the Law as a close second choice if he was in here. And Pneumatic, after after fighting for, for the Hall race, wasn't far behind Maxfield in the Matt win. So Pneumatic's the in most interesting horse at the odds for me. You got some other interesting horses, Matt. There's a trio listed at 15 to 1. I, I, I can't talk myself on any of them, but on the other hand, I can't completely throw them out. Uh, modernist from the Bill Mott Barn, Max Player, uh, trying to give Linda Rice. Uh, well, Linda Rice will be looking to become the first female trainer ever to win a Triple Crown race. And then the other pleasure is Farmington Road with a, with a late run. Yeah, I agree. All three of those 15 to 1 shots have uh, have done some good things in their uh, in, in the past, especially Max Player and Modernist. They both have uh, victories early on in the the original Kentucky Derby Trail, but I just think that they're just a notch below some of the others that we've talked about. Yeah, yeah, I think of the three Modernist and Max Player have the most upside. Modernist could like Belmont, and he, and, and he showed improvement in Louisiana. But on the other hand, he's a little bit one-paced for, for me. I don't see him on or near the lead in here, and I don't see him really kicking it in like some of the others we talked about before. Max Player is interesting in that his races on paper look so good. Uh, just a real strong rally in all three of his lifetime races. He's been away for a while, but I think the thing for Max Player, is he fast enough? Because he really didn't run fast in any of those three races, and really makes a step up in class. And Farmington Road, uh, as a horse with very little early speed, I, I like others like Soli Volante to come from way back better. Uh, four left, we, we mentioned him earlier, Matt. He was a late addition. And I, I think, you know, he's been freshened since he won a race in Dubai. He wired, pretty much wired that race in Dubai, which was the UAE Guineas, a, a group three race over there. Yeah, he was going to run in the UAE Derby, but uh, of course that never happened this year. So now he's had a lot of time off, but he's a speedy horse. He showed that in sprints out in California, plus he's fresh. I think he's going to show quite a bit of speed in here. That's why uh, I think he will give Tappet to win trouble. I don't consider him really sticking around, but as a speed horse, I think he's problematic. The last horse on the list, Matt, I'm not sure why he's in the race. His name is Jungle Runner. He looks like a total throb for me. Yeah, well, uh, you know, uh, Calumet Farms is the owner, and, and we know they like to t take shots in big races. That's the only thing I came up with that horse. I've got to go back to four left a little bit, Brian. I'm a little dubious about the horse in here. Let me say something positive besides what you mentioned about winning that race 
uh, over in Dubai. He did win the Tremont at Belmont Park as a two-year-old, so he has run well on the track. Hey, but Brian, we've seen horses go wire to wire over there uh, at Maidan and then come back to this country and flop. Um, I don't know what to expect from him um, at the most. Maybe he's going to run fast for uh, six furlongs. He's not going to be around at the end. But like you said, is that enough time in there to soften up, tap it to win? I don't know. Maybe. But uh, I'm, I'm very dubious about four left. Yeah, I'm with you, Matt. I, I don't trust that UAE Guineas form at all coming over to a really big dirt race in America. However, he did show sprinter speed before that. And he's fresh. So that's why I think he's going to be speed that, 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 that comes up the works a little bit for Tappet to win, but it's not around when the real running begins. All right, folks, that's our Belmont Stakes preview. Uh, I'm on pneumatic with Tis the Law. Tis the Law, of course, to have your favorite pneumatic is my price play. And Matt, are you, are you on the same two horses? I am on uh, Tis the Law on top, and I am thinking that I'm still going to Put tap it to win in exact as a little bit, and and then I also like Doctor Post. Doctor Post, okay. Oh, both of those over pneumatic. Yes. Okay, there it is, folks. All right, now we have some other Grade Ones on the card. The two races Matt and I picked out that we wanted to talk about, and again, frankly, just like the Belmont Stakes, I was hoping a week or two that these uh, go that these races would come up a little bit stronger than they did, but. Usually very good races, and there's some interesting storylines in here. The first one is the Acorn, which was is one of the best three-year-old Philly races in the country. Um, usually it's after the Kentucky Oaks at the Flat Mile at Belmont Park, one-turn mile at Belmont Park. This year it's before the Kentucky Oaks, of course. And it, it's drawn, at the very least, it's drawn some impressive horses who are extremely lightly raced, two for two, in fact, and uh, it, it reminds me a little bit about Gorana. Yeah, and uh, it, like you said, it's an interesting race. Um, certainly didn't come up with the big names. It's going to go as race eight on the 12 race card at Belmont Park on Saturday. Yeah, the great one, uh, Acorn, on Saturday will be led by Gamin, who's trained by Bob Baffert. Uh, she really made uh, a splash for herself when she romped in her debut out at Santa Anita going six furlongs. The daughter of Into Mischief was very impressive there, Matt. And then she came to Oaklawn heavily, heavily bet in a uh, salty allowance race at Oaklawn, this time stretched out to a mile 16th. And she showed gameness. She, she had to fight those last hundred yards to win, but she did win. She'll be the favorite in the acorn. She sure will, uh, Brian. She'll be a big favorite uh, in the Acorn coming from Bob Baffert. Uh, uh, a lot of ones in her past performances. A lot of speed uh, goes to the lead. Got a, got a pretty big speed figure out of that allowance win, which was a mile and a 16th. Uh, cuts back to a mile in here, which looks like a good thing for the horse, uh, considering that... Uh, uh, the lead that she had down the stretch was dwindling, and she hung on to win by a neck. Um, this is a favorite that I am going to poke holes in, and this is a big favorite that I am going to try to play against. Baffert at Belmont, the Belmont meeting, has sent two horses to New York thus far. Both were heavily bet, and both ran very poorly. Yeah, I'm with you, Matt. I am actually going to try to beat uh, Gamin in the acorn as well. I do like the fact that she's dropping back from a mile 16th, a tough mile 16th race like you do. We should mention that the horse that gave her everything uh, late in that allowance race speech came back and uh, was beaten pretty good by Swiss Skydiver recently out in the Santa Anita Oaks. Uh, Swiss Skydiver, of course, might be the best three-year-old filly in the country. Probably is the best three-year-old filly in the country, at least right now. So... Uh, not too much against speech, but it, it showed you maybe a little bit of a difference between Swiss Skydiver and Gamin. I will also mention, Matt, that Gamin is one of the two horses that was said to uh, return a positive uh, drug test after her Oaklawn win there on Arkansas Derby Day. So that is still hanging. I guess we're still waiting for the other uh, the split test to come back on Gamin. But uh, yeah, that makes me wonder just a little bit. 
It looks like she's going to get the lead. Now, the, 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 there are other horses in here who want to be pretty darn close yeah. early, and they're going to chase her. So I'm going to try to beat her. Uh, the, the three that I think could be out there early chasing, putting pressure on, include Casual and Luke. Kreja, who are the second and third choice, I, I believe, in here. And then also Glass Ceiling, who's won two in a row. Uh, the first one I mentioned was Casual, and she's the other one that's two for two. Uh, daughter of Curlin out of the Steve Asmussen barn, she won uh, both a six furlong maiden race at Oaklawn Park and a seven furlong allowance race at Churchill Downs recently. Both were fast, and she looked good in both. She certainly did. She uh, ran identical speed figures in both of those races. They are the set. They are the second highest speed figures in this race, behind the big number that Gamine got at Oaklawn Park. It's uh, she is from the barn of Steve Asmussen. Ricardo Santana Jr. is coming up. Uh, Asmussen's uh, number one rider to ride on the card, and and this is the kind of filly that that the Asmussen team uh, can be really dangerous with. Yep, she's uh, she's adding another furlong. She added another furlong to go from six to seven to win her second start, and and, and did it nicely. Casual is definitely one of the horses that I like in the Acorn. Yeah, and as a daughter of Curlin, you wouldn't suspect that she's a, a strictly a sprinter. So uh, the one turn should be perfect uh, following that uh, progression that she's had going from Oakland to Churchill 6-7 to seven, now to a one-turn mile at Belmont. We've got to talk about Lucrezia, Matt, because uh, if not for Swiss Skydiver in a, in a pretty strong field in the Gulfstream Park Oaks, Lucrezia was second that day. Lucrezia would be on a very nice winning streak, and it looks like this filly, who is a uh, won some stakes at Tampa Bay before that, it is a miler. Yeah, I agree. I like uh, Lucretia in here also at nine to two on the morning line. That is attractive, as you said, was second last time in the Gulfstream Park Oaks to Swiss Skydiver, and there's nothing wrong with that, Brian. We have talked about how good Swiss Skydiver is, the leader of the three-year-old Philly division, uh, a Philly who's considering taking on the boys at some point um, in her career, so there's nothing wrong with that second-place uh, finish in there. Uh, um, Lucretia, I hope, will sit a little bit farther off the pace in here, and, maybe, and with the speed of some of the others, I think that's a good thing that will happen. Um, for this uh, Arno Delacour trainee. Yeah, yeah, she's definitely worth a look, especially if her odds drift upward at all. Uh, certainly the next horse uh, that we need to mention is Perfect Alibi, because Perfect Alibi was a really nice two-year-old for trainer Mark Cassie last year, Matt. She, she was competitive in all five stakes she ran at, including one early at Belmont Park, but she was a two-time graded stakes winner at Saratoga, where she showed some ability to both rally and to kind of... Uh, Bust her way through some traffic. So perfect alibi, a very nice two-year-old, but she hasn't run since the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Phillies. No, she hasn't. And and in that Breeders' Cup Juvenile Phillies, she ran a good race. She was fourth uh, in in there against a, a good group of Phillies. But this is a little bit of a tough spot to come back and make a start after you know uh, after close to uh, seven months off. Um, it's going to get a good pace set uh, set up, a closer. So uh, it'll be interesting to see. She could come running late and get a piece of things. Perfect alibi. Either. I think she's got a couple things going for her. I think that the one-turn mile with speed ahead of her is probably a good, good thing for her. It looks like that might be her game. And also, it, 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 there should be a pretty fast pace. It looks like the second and third choice that we mentioned and maybe glass ceiling want to go after Gamine a little bit early. So maybe perfect alibi gets the trip. But I agree with you. It's a tough spot to return. And the others look all to be long shots, Matt. Uh, Water White won the busher uh, months ago, but um, probably a different class of horse and a different kind of uh, yeah. time than we'll see here in the acorn. Glass ceiling's won two in a row. Might be getting better, but makes a big jump up in class. But she has some speed. Buzz and Orb uh, ran decently, went third last time, but behind Tonala Shape, who's a nice Florida filly. But again, uh, it might be a little bit tough for her in here as well. Yeah, I, I agree, Brian. Um, so for me, my top pick is going to be uh, casual. 
and um, I certainly like Lucretia in here. I'm probably going to do um, so, and, and some exactas with Casual and Lucretia and hope that Gamine maybe finishes third. Okay. I, I, again, I'm with you. Casual is my top pick. So that's uh, two straight Asmussen, Ricardo Santana runners from the pneumatic in the Belmont and now Casual. Part of that is if, if Gamine is truly in the even money range and Casual is more like three to one, I see some value there. So Casual is my pick. I think she can stalk and run a big race in the A court. All right, Matt, I was very disappointed when I saw the Woody Stevens field came up with only five. Then I did some handicapping and I'm kind of interested actually to bet this race. I think Mischievous Alice, despite the morning line, that's not my morning line. That's that's the Belmont morning line. I think mischievous Alex has to be the favorite off his three race winning streak since he got blinkers, three straight stakes and parks. Then the swale, the graded sw uh, swale was a big race down in Gulfstream. Then he won the Gotham. It's been two and a half months since the Gotham, but I can't see anybody but him being the favorite, even though he's the second co-second choice on the morning line. I agree, Brian. The, the, the Naira line maker usually does a very good job, and, and he did say that uh, small fields like this can be the toughest races to make morning lines in. But, yeah, I don't see Echo Town um, as the favorite in, in this race. I don't even know if I see him as the second choice in this race when we get down to it. Mischievous Alex uh, uh, has won three stakes races in a row. Uh, speedy type last seen uh, winning the Gotham at Aqueduct, um, which was also uh, which was a one turn mile, cutting back to seven furlongs in here. The connections, I think, made a wide wise decision uh, to keep this horse sprinting as opposed to moving ahead on the Kentucky Derby Trail. Yeah, yeah, they considered the Belmont, and, and and what I've heard is that they are talking about this as a prep race for the nine furlong Haskell, so I wonder how geared up he is for this. Another problem with Mischievous Alex is he was very close to those paces in uh, in those wins. The swale was especially impressive, but now this pace is going to be hot, 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 even with five horses, it's going to be a hot pace, uh, mainly because of no parole, so I think Mischievous Alex if he sits third and can relax a little bit early and run his race, I think he's the horse to beat. But on the other hand, as the favorite, I want to try to beat him. I do think Echo Town will be the second choice. Uh, he's run five very good sprint races, but all five were at six furlongs. He's the only non-stakes winner in the race. And uh, he's he's really been tough down the lane of these six furlong sprints. He's, he's a legitimate sprinter. But I worry about him having to go after no parole early and then still having a lot left for seven furlongs of this Woody Stevens. So I like the favorite, Mischievous Alex, better than the second choice, Echo Town. The third choice will either be No Parole, who is all speed. The Louisiana bred has won four races just for absolute fun before getting a sloppy mile 16th in the Rebel. But he's going to be on the lead. He's the one that Echo Town especially and probably Mischievous Alex have to, have to chase. That leaves Maru, Matt, as my really good bet in here. I think Maru is not going to be as low as the morning line odds maker have him at five to two. I think he's more uh, co third choice, more in the four to one range. And I really like what I see from Maru. He was a good sprinter last year at Monmouth. He had a bad trip when he was second in the Nashville at a mile behind the big race by Independence Hall. And then his return race was good. He was in tight, but he was coming late to Echo Town in that six furlong stakes quality allowance race at Churchill Downs last time. Give him seven furlongs. He can relax back off the lead a little bit in fourth place early. Watch what the favorites do. Watch how fast they go. Make his move on the turn. I think Maru is going to win this race, and, I, and I'm looking forward to odds around four to one. I completely agree with you, Brian. Um, Maru is my top pick in this race. That uh, that third place at Churchill Downs in the allowance um, was a really, really good effort. He was in tight quarters coming down the stretch. He was bottled up um, uh, in trouble. When he finally got clear, he came flying and came up third, but it was less than a length from the top spot. I think he gets a great setup in 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 this race. Hey, no parole, Brian. He's fast. He's really fast. And yeah. uh, 
from the barn of uh, Tom Amos. He's getting rider Louis Saez up up in there. Can't be discounted in this spot. Uh, um, for me, the top two are Maru and No Parole. Interesting. Yeah, I, I think No Parole has a tough job in here, but interesting because I, I do think No Parole, I think we're going to see fractions in the 21 and and low 44s, maybe even 43. I think Echo Town has to do the job of going after No Parole, but maybe he can just never get past No Parole and maybe No Parole stays or Mischievous yeah. Alex makes his move and No Parole stays. So that's an interesting selection. I'm not as big on no parole in here as you are because I think it's a tough race to run that fast, stick around for seven furlongs against these quality sprinters. But I'm all about Maru because I think the race just sets up beautifully for him with those fractions of 44 flat or so and him sitting in fourth as the other three do the dirty work. I think that really sets up for Maru and I think he's a quality sprinter waiting to show he's even better than that trouble third place last time at Churchill Downs. So, yeah, I'm, I'm with you all about Maru. Uh, the fifth horse, by the way, I could see making some noise late in here, Matt. He is shoplifted, and he's the other Asmussen, and he's been running distance races for a while. But if you look back at his past performances early on, he had some success sprinting. He's going to be lost early, and if, if the pace is as hot as I think it could be, with Echo Town going after no parole, mischievous Alex not far behind in 44 flat, shoplifted might actually come running late. And uh, I, I could see a Maru shoplifted exacta in a five horse race where it's the fourth choice over the fifth choice map. Yeah, and remember with uh, Shoplifted, he won the Springboard Mile back in December of this year on the Kentucky Derby Trail. Um, and then after that, he, he he ran a bunch of races still on the Derby Trail, two turn, uh, two turn spots uh, against those Derby hopefuls. And, and like you said, maybe now um, he's getting back into a seven furlong race, which uh, would be a good spot for him. It's a tough field, however. Tough field, but but I like the cutback and distance program. I will have in a Maru shoplifted exact the box as one of my plays because I think shoplifted, uh, this might be a good spot for shoplifted as the, as the long shot in the field. All right, Matt, we went through uh, the biggest three races at Belmont Park on Saturday, the Belmont, where we expect his the law to be very tough. The Acorn, where we both tried to beat Gamine with casual as our top pick. And then the Woody Stevens, where Matt and I are both on Maru, hoping he's at least the third choice, maybe the fourth choice in that seven for a long sprint. Matt, can I get a parting shot from you as we are just two days out from Belmont Stakes Day 2020? Absolutely, Brian. Um, I, I think that's uh, the kind of handicapping we like to do. We have so much respect for Tis the Law as the favorite, but we're trying to beat some suspect favorites in the Acorn and the uh, Woody Stevens. So, and as always... I want to thank our producer, Brett Workman, for putting together the show. Yeah, thanks to Brett. And thanks for all you watching every week, Matt, and I sure do appreciate it. Hey, if you haven't yet, hit that subscribe button there on our YouTube channel at Horse Racing Nation. Please do so now. We also want to thank our sponsor, the best content site out there. That's Derby Wars. Uh, folks, we know it's a wacky triple crown year. We know this Belmont Sticks may not be what it looked like it could be a, a little while ago, but we're still excited and uh, an early congratulations to either Tis the Law or the horse that can upset him in the Belmont Stakes because, like it or not, and, and as wacky as it is, this is the first leg of the Triple Crown, and it, it's a key Kentucky Derby prep this year, Matt. So that's something as well. Thanks for joining me on the show again, Matt. We look forward to seeing you next week right here on Horse Center.